the amount of trauma in people's lives, the amount of pain, it just, it's, yeah, I want to make a difference. I want people to have access to tools that can really help them. I see so many clients and people doing workshops where they say things to me like, I haven't spoken to my daughter for six years, this one guy. So tragic, you know, and he said, but when I did this training, I called her and we had a conversation and it was beautiful. And, you know, it just brings tears to my eyes because this quite simple, quite simple training can make such a profound difference to people's relationships and their lives, you know, and that, that, that father-daughter relationship, you know, and that's what makes me, when I hear stories like that, I go, yes, you know, that's why I'm doing this. It wasn't always fun growing up. There was a lot of pain for me. I didn't make friends easily. I got teased a lot and um, was kind of an outsider. I had secondhand, you know, hand-me-down clothes and I was from England, so I had white skin and I was different. I felt like I didn't quite fit in anywhere. Yeah, the school bus was often full of trauma for me. This one particular time, this boy, I don't know what, he, I can't remember exactly what he did, but it was pretty unpleasant and I stood up and confronted him. And it's a pretty vague memory, but I just, I, what I remember is that he punched me in the stomach. <laughs> um, and I guess what that meant for me was that it's not safe to intervene and to say my truth or to to stick up for other people or yeah it's dangerous there is something in me real longing to for authenticity and fairness and that still stays with me now i think that longing for fairness and justice and equality and care for people that don't can't find their own voice and yeah because I that compassion I have for not having a voice so for so long finding that really difficult in my childhood to be heard and speak up. Mum and dad were quite strict and what mum and dad said there was no question don't answer back I would get wrapped on the knuckles at the table just for speaking I made myself small to stay safe and didn't speak up and didn't, yeah. I remember in grade seven, my teacher, he gave me the lead role in the play and I was so shy. I was like, why would he choose me? And yet I did it. And he saw that potential in me and I was really kind of like, wow. And I stepped up to that, you know, and I felt acknowledged and, um, seen and heard. When I left school I went and did teacher training and what I learned there and the psychology there was a lot about communication, active listening and then I became a nurse after that. I did general nursing and then psychiatric nursing and the psychiatric nursing component. Um, yeah all that psychology stuff really spoke to me and learning about communication skills and hearing the, the beauty of being heard, fully heard living in an echo village, you know, where we, there's a lot of conflict. We live close together. There's no fence, a lot of people don't, unless you have a dog, there's no fences. So there's flow of noise and communicate, you know, so there's a lot of opportunity for conflict. And because their gardens often blend into each other. So there's, um, can imagine this. <laughs> and we're sharing a lot of things. We're sharing buildings, we're sharing gardens, we're sharing all the land, the farm, and all the roads and everything we all. So um, there's a real onus on us to communicate and get along because we need to manage these things through committees and a lot of meetings. And often that doesn't go well, you know, because we're human. <laughs> um, so living here, I realised quite early on that if I wanted to live here and, and be, able, be in harmony and be able to communicate honestly, which is really important to me to have that honest self-expression, I wanted to find a way to do that that wasn't going to cause more harm or more separation and conflict. And I wasn't quite, I hadn't quite come across that in all my learnings up until I found NVC training, but I went, that all fits together. 
And not only does it all fit together, everything I've learnt through my life, but also it's accessible to all. I, I really saw that people from all walks of life and all backgrounds and all belief systems, children and adults, people in businesses and you know, people who want to work on their family relationships, it was just so accessible and so um, relevant over so many different areas of life. I went, this is it. I remember seeing an image on Facebook um, and there was like this riot police and with all the gear and everything and this woman in kind of like this very un, um, unarmoured, like a flimsy sort of summer dress and she's just standing in front of these, these riot police with a flower. And it's just this beautiful image of um, like, I'm here, I'm not going anywhere, I'm not fighting but I'm just here and I'm standing my ground and I'm, yeah, just, and with a flower, that sort of peaceful beauty and peace and gentleness of that, I suppose. And I guess that's what I've come to in my life is that I no longer want to fight what I don't want. I want to put that energy rather than fighting something, I want to bring that energy to creating what I do want, focusing on that and building that, that's really clear to me now, that's what I want to do.